When you think of the American Air Force, you think of planes and Tom Cruise. It might surprise you, though, that America's first Air Force had neither planes nor Tom. Our first Air Force was hot air balloons and was used during the American Civil War. Our story begins with a man by the name of Thaddeus Lowe, a Union aeronaut who worked for the Army's First Corps. He first saw the possibility of balloon reconnaissance after a hot air balloon trip he made in April of 1861. It was supposed to be a simple flight, starting in Cincinnati, Ohio, and ending on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. But things did not go to plan. Thaddeus somehow ended up in Confederate territory in South Carolina and was captured and then later released. This trip got Thaddeus hooked. He traveled to Washington, D.C. to propose his idea of a balloon corps to President Abraham Lincoln. So on June 16, 1861, he demonstrated his balloon reconnaissance with a balloon named the Enterprise. After the demonstration, Lincoln met with Lowe to talk about using balloons to gather intelligence. Lincoln loved the idea so much that he arranged for Lowe to meet Winfield Scott, and soon, the Union Army Balloon Corps was formed, and Lowe was given the title of Chief Aeronaut. And finally, on August 12, 1861, he received the money to build his first balloon. Soon, the Union Army Balloon Corps consisted of seven balloons. Some of these balloons were pretty big even by today's standards, with the two largest being the Union and the Interpret both being 32,000 cubic feet and being able to carry five people. The next two largest balloons would be the Constitution and the United States, which were both 25,000 cubic feet and were able to carry three people. And who could forget the Washington, a balloon of 20,000 feet, or the Eagle and the Excelsior, both of which being 15,000 cubic feet and able to be operated by a singular person. It was these ships that made up the mighty Union Balloon Corps, or the first American Air Force. A thing that I found interesting while doing my research for this video was that the balloons were purposely colored brightly to scare Confederate troops and show them that there was someone above them, watching them at all times, seeing their every move. Most of the time, the balloons were usually tethered to the ground, but in a few special cases, a skilled pilot would be able to free fly to get intelligence. In August of 1861, our old friend Thaddeus Lowe built the aircraft carrier the USS George Washington Parca Custis, or something like that, out of an old coal barge, and soon other barges were built for the balloons. I just think it's amazing that when you think of like aircraft carriers, you think of World War II and all the fighting there, but 80 years before, they were able to make something like this and use it for battle, and most people just don't know anything about it. When a balloon was deployed on the battlefield, it could change the whole game. You could see miles of the surrounding area. This proved to be useful during long campaigns and battles. During late 1861 and early 1862, all of the balloons were tethered outside Washington, D.C. and along the Potomac River. This helped the capital protect itself from enemy forces. It was during the Battle of First Manassas where the balloons were finally used in battle. Thaddeus Lowe gathered information using the balloons. The Confederate troops were positioned three miles from the Union Army. So, Union troops fired at Arlington, Virginia, at Confederate troops at Falls Church, without even seeing their target. This was a first in military history. Sure, it did nothing to win the battle for America, but we don't really like to talk about that. After First Manassas, balloons continued to play a crucial role in the war, and the Confederates knew that they had to get rid of the balloons as soon as possible. So during the Peninsula Campaign of 1862, Confederate troops would fire as balloons would ascend and descend. 
but thankfully all balloons survived. And these balloons helped Union soldiers spot the Confederates while they were evacuating. The Confederates knew that they had to do something to keep up with the Union. So in the spring of 1862, they created their balloon corps, which was supervised by Captain John Randolph Bryan, a man who had no idea what he was doing. He said himself that, I have never seen a balloon and know absolutely nothing about the management of it. Instead of their balloons being filled up with hydrogen, which the Confederate Army did not have the equipment for, they had their balloons fly on hot air. On April 13, 1862, Bryan launched the balloon over Yorktown, Virginia. All went well, he sketched the Union lines near the area, but on the second trip, things got so much worse. Somehow an idiot on the ground got tangled in the ropes, and Captain Bryan was forced to cut them, causing him to go into free flight. While this was happening, Confederate troops mistook the balloon for a Union balloon and began to fire upon it. Luckily, Bryan was able to land the balloon without any major harm being done. The next balloon the Confederacy made was named the Gazelle, and was nicknamed the Silk Dress Balloon because it was made out of multicolored dress silk. A popular tale told about this balloon was that the generous bells of the South donated their own dresses to make the balloon. But in reality, no dresses were harmed, so... Thanks, Daughters of the Confederacy! After the gazelle or silk dress balloon was constructed, it was moved to the Confederate tugboat, the CSS Teaser, where, while during the Seven Days Battle, General Edward Porter piloted her. Unfortunately, the Confederate Balloon Corps would not last. Four days after the Seven Days Battle, the CSS Teaser was attacked by the USS Monitor and the Martinez on the James River, and the Confederates were forced to flee, leaving their ship and balloon behind. When Union forces captured the balloon, they gave it to Thaddeus Lowe, who cutted the gazelle into tiny pieces and then shipped them off to Congress as souvenirs. And that was the end of the Confederate Balloon Corps. Now, I'm sure Thaddeus Lowe felt really good about himself. He had outlived his competitor. But even though the Union Balloon Corps had its use, it would be dissolved. You see, even though the balloon saw everything... It was very difficult to communicate with the officers down below. In 1863, the Balloon Corps funding was cut, making it harder for the Corps to be effective. And then Thaddeus Lowe's pay was cut, making him resign on May 8, 1863. And by August 1863, General Ulysses S. Grant dissolved the Balloon Corps. And finally, on April 20th, 1864, the army auctioned off the remaining equipment that they had. Even though it had never really failed, the Balloon Corps was decades ahead of its time. The next war that aviation reconnaissance would play key roles in would be the Spanish-American War and one that you've probably heard of, World War I. And the fact that they were able to launch the balloons on water vessels just blows my mind. So... Now you know about the first Air Force. Well, have a good day, and I'll see you on the other side.